Final Whistle is brought to you by Get 25% off a 7 or 28 day Prime Rata bundle in the My Digicel app today. Enter to pick and win with Digicel this Christmas. Nothing moves your vibe, your mood or your appetite like the taste of grace. Pepsi. Cool. You just get to work. Are you more hungry, man? We are the king of this. Like how up are the king of burgers. Taste rules your way at Burger King. The best tasting burgers under the... Welcome to Final Whistle, I'm Spencer Darlington. Now, we are one full week into action at the 2022 FIFA World Cup in Qatar, and already it has been a tournament full of talking points, both on and off the field, because we saw two huge, humongous upsets earlier this week. Those two teams which created the upsets came back and lost their second games. We saw two upsets today again, first game on the day. Um, Japan, who created that massive upset, so one of them earlier this week, went down to Costa Rica. And then we had Belgium, a team which came in with a number of big-name players, still not playing any great brand of football, losing earlier today to Morocco. So, so many upsets. This tournament has served up just about so many things to talk about. And I tell you something, there is still a lot more to come after one week of the tournament. Now, my team and I are here to discuss and analyze the highs and the lows seen so far at this uh, showpiece event. With me, Andrew Price, head coach of Calabar High School and the technical director of a Humber Line a Football Club. Sharona Forrester, the former rigger girl and a former assistant team manager is here as well. Shavar Thomas, former national player and now coaching as well, he is very much here. Eric Rademacher has been here from day one. He's still here, technical director of Campion College. And we are also joined on Zoom by the former Reggae Boys assistant coach, Miguel Coley, all the way in Qatar. And we have as well our junior analyst, Liam Henriquez. He is with us on Zoom as well. So let's get the ball rolling and let's look at the last match on the day then. One apiece between Spain and Germany. You know, you have some heavyweights who are still not playing their best brand of football. And one of them is Germany. They have come out of their slumber just a bit. Um, they've gotten a wake-up call after the first game and realized they are in a serious competition, but they still didn't look um, all that uh, threatening and imperious today. But let's say it, they looked better than their first game. Another team which is really um, blowing hot and cold, more lukewarm, is Belgium. And we'll talk so much more about them. So one apiece then between uh, these two teams just now. And it, it was a match where either team, I think, could have won. Andrew, uh, we had goals in the 62nd and 83rd minutes of the contest. Um, Spain, as I said, I, I told you um, Germany and Belgium are not playing any great brand of football. I have to say, in my estimation, Spain, Brazil, Ecuador and France, uh, to me, are playing the most attractive and attacking brand of football so far, Andrew. But this, to me, this game just ended. I think either team could have won it. Yes, this was a chess match. It was a very tactical game. I think um, Spain had the ascendancy, especially in the first 20 minutes of the game. But as the game wore on, um, Germany understood that the only way that you could get this tiki-taka to be under control was to press higher up the park. And they started to press higher up the park and started to get some opportunities. Um, both teams were cagey. Germany knew that they could not lose the game. And even though they went behind, they still fought back and were able to equalize. I thought Spain was always in control of the game. And knowing that they have three points in, um, on, on the table already, they were just doing enough to get through the game. But a, a highly competitive game. Both teams gave as good as they got. But I think that Spain really got some opportunities and they look very fluid. As a matter of fact, I think they're the most fluid team um, that I've seen so far in the World Cup. And despite the draw today, it's not a major setback for them. Um, they're still on their way. So Spain is leading the group on four points. And then we have Japan on three, Costa Rica three, and uh, Germany on one point. They are very much in a spot of bother, Shavar, aren't they? Most definitely, but I mean, they have it all to play for against uh, Los Ticos, uh, who had a good result today. Um, so we're looking forward to how the zone end up, and um, it's really interesting who's going to go forward. 
Yeah, Sharon, I liked what I saw in this uh, last game too. Uh, Germany, as I said, realized, look, we need to get a result. And Spain looked uh, very auspicious in their opening game against um, Costa Rica. And that really set the tone for a, a cracker of a contest, which we saw. Right, one team coming in very confident. Um, the other team coming in knowing quite well that it is hit, go come out or go home. Mm -hmm. That's just it. Um, and I think they came up big today, just when it mattered most. And I'm looking forward to see, seeing you know, what they do in the rest of this round. Yeah, Eric, I think Germany is still lacking a potent and consistent goal scorer. I think Thomas Muller has passed his best. Their midfield is um, there or thereabouts, but it's not the German team of uh, former years that we are seeing here. They're, they're struggling, for sure. Um, I mean, of course, you look at goal scorers, they have their record, you know, with, with Miroslav Klose, who's been banging in goals in World Cups for years. But I think they, they, they're trying. Um, we saw that Goretzka came in in the midfield and kind of Gundogan moved up higher. Müller now moved higher as a striker role instead of Havertz. Um, but that wasn't really giving them that, that striker, as, as you say, that can really score those goals. And uh, eventually they put on full crook. He scored 10 goals this season at Werder Bremen so far in 14 matches. And he gets his chance. And I think when he came on, uh, there was a good ball by the first post that he was just a little too late. Mm -hmm. <coughs> uh, but that's a striker moment. And then the second one, he, um, yeah, he, he really just takes the ball and says, my ball, that, and just bangs it in the top corner like how you want a striker to behave in the box. So... Uh, that was a good striker goal that they eventually get from, from Fulkrug, who, who gave them that. Yeah, Miguel, uh, Germany looked like they're still searching for the right combination, especially up front. And really, as I said, looking for that classic number nine. And uh, on the other hand, you have Spain, Alvaro Morata, coming on for the second game in a row, scoring. So he is now staking a claim for a starting spot when they play again on Thursday, I would want to think, Miguel. Yes, definitely. Um, we have to look at the, the, the game model of, of either team. I think um, the, the, the coach wants overload, especially in the central area. So when he plays a, um, a, a shadow striker, he, he creates that overload, especially in the middle of the park. And that w w was giving um, the German team a, a lot of problem. On the German side, I think they need to find their game model. Um, German, German is normally gegen pressing counter-pressing, good, fast, break. They were playing a little bit too slow um, um, against this, this Spanish team. They need to, to, to change the ball a little bit more. The rhythm of the game needed, needed to improve. And you saw that in the, in the second half when they have a striker that, you know, Germany is a team that traditionally plays with a number nine player and also have players who are running behind. And I think that made a difference in the second half. I think, however, they got a lifeline because I think um, the Spanish coach, after Morata, that, that made a difference, of course. But after bringing Williams and um, the left foot to, to put Alba, I think in that moment uh, was, a, was a critical moment because when the goal scored, the left back wasn't even settled as yet. I'm not sure if Alba was injured or not, but I think those, those changes um, allowed Germany back in the game and for Spain to become weaker. But Germany has a lifeline and that's all they need. I believe those two teams, Germany and Spain, will still be going through to the second round. Yeah, and that lifeline you spoke about, Miguel, for the Germans coming as a result of Costa Rica clipping Japan. Miguel, oftentimes we see teams that after their first game, we'll say, OK, it's just the first game. The tournament is still, they still have matches. But when you look, the three games will be over in a jiffy. And if you're not careful, you're packing to go home. The Germans uh, um, are in a spot of bother, as I said, that Miguel, um, Liam. But when you look at how they executed today, I, th I thought they played a little better than their first game, showed a little more urgency. Spain, on the other hand, uh, have been looking very, very good attacking-wise. And I think their coach has them playing the brand of football and getting the results which um, he um, desires so far, um, Liam. No, yeah. Um, Spain played very good football today, you know, as usual. You know, Maybe not as much as they, you know, they wanted. They created a lot of chances. As so did Germany. Both teams missed, missed some really clear-cut chances. You know, Germany will obviously be more happy with the result, result based off you know, what happened in um, match day one. But Spain, yeah, I think they're playing some really good football. They are also two lacking a, a proper number nine, but that honestly fits their system a bit more with Asensio. But and then again, Morata did come on and score a goal. Um, Alvaro Morata is a very inconsistent player. It's like no in between with him. He's either very good or very bad. So he could start the next game and play terrible. I just with him, it's it's honestly funny to watch him. Um, as for Germany, um, we spoke about their number nine, you know, previously, and we spoke about Fulkrug possibly getting a start or someone, and that's exactly what happened. He came on and scored a goal. 
Um, Thomas Muller is not the proper number nine, and I think Fulkirk should definitely get the start there as, you know, the really only proper number nine in the um, in the team. So he definitely get a start next match. And Sané also came on and brought life. So, yeah, you know, Germany, really lucky, you know, after their 2-1 shock. And even if they lost, they still would have a chance to, you know, in the, in the match day three to go through. So Germany, based off all the results, have been really lucky. And Spain, you know, I still, it's still Germany, so Spain will still be, you know, happy with the result. Yeah, the other match we are going to look at is uh, the first game on the day where Japan were upset 1-0 by Costa Rica. Costa Rica coming off that heavy 7-0 loss to Spain in their first match. And the Costa Ricans actually scored um, very early in that match after, what, 56 seconds? And uh, the fastest goal at the World Cup so far. Uh, they had two shots and one on target. That gave them the goal, Costa Rica, which ended up winning the match. But um, a late goal um, in, in that um, for the Costa Ricans, early goal there, uh, upsetting Japan. Uh, Andrew, the Costa Ricans, they're going to be playing uh, Germany in their final group game. Um, the Germans, as I said, getting a lifeline because of that. But this first game today, the Japanese coach, Andrew, made five changes. And a lot of persons found that very surprising. Five changes from the team, which upset the Germans 2-1 in their first game. And I think up to this point, he has used uh, 21 of his 26 players. What do you think was the school of thought behind his um, choice coming into this game here? Well, having um, done some research and looked at the, um, the Spain-Costa Rica game, he was thinking that maybe he would rest some of his um, frontline players and give them an opportunity against Costa Rica. But it was a bad mistake because Costa Rica regrouped came back today and looked very plucky, looked more organized. They were very, very astute defensively, and they waited and waited and bided their time. Japan didn't take the opportunities when they could have, and they scored very late in the game and got all three points. And at this point now, Costa Rica has an opportunity to go to the second round with one game to go. So the group is wide open, and, I, I, you know, when teams win games, they get complacent, and I think Japan got complacent when they played and selected the starting 11 to play against Costa Rica today. And Costa Rica decided that, look, we are going to represent CONCACAF and we are going to come and play some good football today. We can't leave here without a victory. And they got three points and they are still within the money. Yeah, in fact, it was an 81st minute goal by Costa Rica. The early goal I told you about, which we'll tell you much more later on about, is Canada. Uh, Alfonso Davies, who scored after 56 seconds. But we'll talk about that match in a short while. Japan going down to Costa Rica, um, Shavar, opening up the group standings just a bit um, as, as they look now. Yeah, I mean, definitely. Like I said, and I've been saying, I need to see the teams that play in their first game that didn't do well step up. And that's what Costa Rica did today. Um, defensively, they looked a little bit better. Um, like um, players were more aware of what they, what the coach wants or what they want to do, and um, they they get an opportunity and they take it. Yeah, um, the 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 way the Concacaf teams have been uh, going so far, Sharona, the results have been mixed. It's a mixed bag we have gotten so far. But this shocker today, Costa Rica um, would do their morale a world of good, uh, having suffered such a heavy loss mm -hmm. in their first game. Well, having suffered that loss, you know, minus seven, it's no surprise. Instead of the 4-4-2, four, four, mm -hmm. they defended 5-4-1. Uh, so they really, I, I think Japan was not expecting um, to have them so organized. Yes. Um, so as Coach said, they might have been a little um, foolhardy um, to make so many changes. Because sometimes I say, if something is not broken, mm -hmm. uh, don't, don't try fix to fix it. it. Mm -hmm. And I think... I really liked how they defended um, in that game. And sometimes you just want one little opening and you take your chance and then you go back and lock it down. Unfortunately for them, they only had nine minutes of open play plus extra time to really just hold for it. And they did just that. Yeah, Eric, the Japanese didn't show a great amount of urgency at the outset. And many persons are wondering, what were they really up to? Were they underestimating the Costa Ricans? Um, I think, as, as Sharona said, that low block, that 5 for one sitting low block that was well organized, I think is, is, is something that they, um, they saw uh, required a different approach. We saw that, um, a lot of changes at halftime where Japan went into a three-man back line, uh, wing-backs play higher up. And uh, I think that was, a, that was a great tactical change. Um, and it applied a lot more pressure on Costa Rica. But uh, it's funny because if you don't score, uh, Costa Rica literally took one shot on target for the entire World Cup and they have three points and a 1-0 victory. 
So um, Costa Rica come away with a, a lucky win, um, but um, a goal is a goal. Yes, a goal is a goal, Eric, uh, in, in no uncertain terms, Miguel, because Costa Rica had, what, two shots on goal and one was uh, on target and scored, huh? Yeah, it was, it was a game of mentality. Um, the, the Costa Rica and their, their aging team, they have a lot of pride. And, um, you know, they reached rock bottom. What can they do? They became more organized. But it's a World Cup. These teams play through qualification to reach the World Cup. They have some quality. And um, the Costa Rican lost against Spain, you know, being not organized coming against Spain in the first game. You can get seven. I mean, G Germany got 6-1 from Spain um, not so long ago. So Spain is a, is, a, is a quality team. So the Japanese coach kind of look at the fact that they lost against Spain and said, look, hey, we have an easy game. And, you know, sometimes when you climb a mountain, which Japan defeated um, um, the German team, sometimes you climb a mountain, and um, you you want to descend to maybe take on a smaller challenge or a smaller mountain. It can cause a lot of problems. What is important is a mindset that you know you, you you're not necessarily moving from from a high point to a low point, but you you make that that um, second mountain be from a mental standpoint a great challenge. I think I think the Japanese didn't do that. They they, they were very flat. Um, I think Endo and the midfielders didn't control the game enough. Um, the Costa Rican weren't spectacular. They play very robust. Um, they play the 3 4 3, which is 5 4 1, um, in sometimes in defensive transition, which made it difficult for the Japanese. They didn't change the ball as quickly as enough. You know, they didn't create any overload. And as I said, they were just flat. And I'm, I'm really, really happy um, that they, the Costa Rican um, um, were, was able to win this game. I was really, really happy for Kankakov and also for the close tie with Costa Rica and Jamaica. Quite so. And before we go to the break, uh, Liam, let me just get your take on this. How surprised were you at this um, outcome in the first game on the day? No, oh, yeah, I was very shocked. Um, you know, Costa Rica, I mean, even just looking at the stats, man, one shot on target, one goal in, in two games. But, I mean, Japan, like we said, you know, they played, they started the game with the same formation as they did against um, Germany. And it's, so it's not like they were, you know, switching up their formation to play more attacking against a worse team it's more like they were subbing in there, you know, the, the bench players to get the, them game time as well and rest their other players, but you can't be doing that in a World Cup. Uh, credit to Costa Rica. You know, their goal wasn't, I mean, it was good, but Keeper probably should have saved it. But, you know, great, set up great tactically. You know, didn't concede. And, you know, I don't think Costa Rica will get much else out of this tournament, but they got their win, so credit to them. All righty, let's go into another break now. When we come back, we look at Belgium versus Morocco. The Belgians were given... A shocking result. Final Whistle brought to you by Digicel, Grace, Pepsi and Burger King. Enjoy enough pickings this Christmas with a chance to pick and win your share of over 16 million in cash and prizes. Plus, get 25% off a 7 or 28 day Prime Brata bundle in the My Digicel app today. Enter to pick and win with Digicel this Christmas. Grace Foods got the taste that moves you. Yard and a brownie moves you. Grace Foods, the taste that moves you. Feel the vibes and the time when they be a Grace Foods from the end. That's why when we move, we move with grace. Fool! You just get what? But you more hungry, man. We are the king of this. Like how we are the king of burgers. Yes, when Burger King goes so boom, and they make the beef patty well seasoned up and put it on the open flame, then they go so juicy pickles, tomatoes, freshly cut onions, crispy lettuce, classic. Every other burger still stuck at square one. Beam! Three juicy waffle right on time. Taste rules your way at Burger King. The best tasting burgers under the sun. Let's talk variety. TVJ has Jamaica's best radio, print, and digital media partners to help carry your message effectively. TV talks to your audience. Hello. 
Let's Talk TV. Call TVJ Sales Department at 876-926-1100 or visit televisionjamaica.com. Final Whistle brought to you by Digicel, Grace, Pepsi and Burger King. Welcome back to Final Whistle. So we had two surprising results on uh, today's action or in today's action at the World Cup. We had uh, Japan losing to Costa Rica in the first match and Morocco beating Belgium 2-0 in their contest in uh, Group F. Now, a lot is being said about teams which are old, teams which are young. And the Belgian team, from the stats we have seen, is the oldest at this World Cup. I just looked at the stats. I saw different stats, but the one from a good football source says their average age is 299 and that makes them old. A lot of persons are saying, what about Croatia? Persons say they are old, but they looked very, very good against a sprightly and young Canadian team, which we'll, we'll talk about in a short while. Now, Kevin De Bruyne, um, before the, in a pre-tournament uh, interview, and the inter aspects of it were published this weekend, he was asked about Belgium's chances of winning this World Cup, and he said, no chance. Um, and he also said, we're too old. I think our chance was in 2018. And as I said, Andrew, if you want to talk about teams which are older, the Belgians, they've, they've looked flat. The, 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 the description we have heard of them. Uh, in fact, they looked insipid in many aspects of their um, play today. After two games, they're not looking auspicious at all, Andrew. Yes, they looked very lethargic, you know. And it's a good that you brought out of comparison with age. Croatia has a team almost a similar age at 29, uh, average age of 29 years old. Yet still, you saw more urgency with the Croatian team. But with this Belgium team, this golden generation, we are not seeing the type of urgency, the type of movement. You know, it was as if it was a Sunday morning kick around. And um, I'm sure Martinez must be very disappointed with the display of the team. Um, two of the goals that the Moroccans scored, I believe, were defensive errors. And a keeper of the repertoire of Corto should not have allowed those goals to have been scored. So hold on. The Belgians have come in, as we said. Uh, we keep talking and talking about this golden generation. Big names, big players, heavyweight players. Um, apart from Lukaku, who is injured and um, not at 100% at the moment. And they have come to another World Cup, Andrew, and um, they, they're flattered to deceive. Why? Sometimes people just can't get it going. I mean, a lot of these players are established players in their clubs all around the world and doing well. But yet still, when they come together, they can't. So they're not a tournament them. team then? They're not a tournament team. Okay. And they have proven it because the last World Cup, they flattered to deceive. And again, they are flattered to deceive. When you look at players of the caliber of Kevin De Bruyne, Hazard, all those players, and you're not getting the production, what you need out of them, it's very disappointing. It's hugely disappointing. Now, the Maverick is on the go. He's somewhere out there, somewhere out and about, roaming and roving. Let's check in with the Maverick. Okay, 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 okay. As you can see, yeah, you know where the streets carry the Maverick today? You know where the scooter carry the Maverick today? With their 98 Walton Park Road, yeah? Sonia's on the terrace, you see it? It's like, a, it's like one of the mini stadiums them from Qatar, Ronia, so yeah? So the fans are out there still together. Yeah, one big, no, two big watch party, you know? Yeah, two big watch party. One big watch party outside, so, and them have another watch party on the other side of the premise. So it, it, it was not a normal setting. I, I tell you this, the excitement, they turn up a while ago. The German fans, them run enough. We have a premier, G German boss, come here, I call him Ansi Flick, to earn the German boss, yeah? Yeah, put, <laughs> yeah, yeah, to earn the German boss. Look, look on the scarf for the man around him neck. You see that? Look, the first thing I'll tell you, you know. I <laughs> oh, you know, welcome to the welcome to the final whistle on TV Live. All right. Nice. Nice. Alright. Look here. This man make a bet around here, you know. Say if German I saw me here, you know. Say if Germany lose and go home today, your father was a woman. I saw I saw the bet go. <laughs> and the other way around, your mother was a man. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Sir, we, 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 we draw and we're going through. Yeah. You understand? We need, we need to win the next match and Spain yeah. win and we're going through with Spain. Yeah, yeah, as yeah, the yeah. second one. Yeah, well, you know how the groups, you know, every team have a chance in the group, you know. But you may have said to yourself, how the World Cup looked to you so far? Everything overall with the World Cup. Excited. 
Yeah. Excited. And tomorrow, even better because Brazil will play. I know Jamaica, 90% of Jamaica are Brazil. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why, but. So, you know, it says it's soon as the terrorists can't hold tomorrow evening. But look here, I want to chat to some of the fans, you know. Yeah. See, see a bridge now, we come. Yeah. See a bridge now, now. Is that is that Germany? Queensbury. Yeah. I am I am Dexter is from Queensbury. Yeah. I'm a real avid German fan. I bet five hundred dollars on Germany to beat Spain one 0 But the German defensive got a bit careless. Are you money bono? I'm a money bono. I'm a money bono. Bet better look next time. We're coming on us one chat to come. Big up yourself, Richard. See a man with a flag of growth time here, you know. You see the German flag in the way about Germany all the way, man. You, you, what you say? You still feel, you, you, you escape to this. What you feel, say? You can rally back and win the group and go to. More than rally back, you know, because look on it. Sometimes you get defeated, but that is a motivation to push you forward, you know? Yeah. Yes, man. All right. I just want your people over the Maverick shoulder and look inside of the stadium. When you look over there, so you see the, see, the, see, the, see the big screen inside there. Yeah, and this already, this did ram jam of fans earlier in the day. As I tell you, see another, another, st another mini stadium around there. So, see some more fans. Are. Come here, so we can chat to some more of them fans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Where, where is, where are the Brazilian? Where is the Brazilian? Yeah, 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 yeah. big yeah, side. Brazil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brazil, huh? we, we see my year team, my boss. Brazil, man, my general, man. How we look, how we look? Now, man, after we work up, my general. How we can manage it out there, man? Well, we still have a good side, man. We still have a good side. Yeah. Man. Name or release. All right, my boss. You have a you have a, you have a team in a, you have a team in the race, my boss. The Queen, God save the King. Englishman, this is the one and only Englishman, you Yes, man. You have a chance. Yes, man. Um, the the 20th youngest side in the team. A short tournament, so their turnaround time in terms of recovery is gonna make them hard to beat. All right, you hear that? Knowledgeable sports fan, right here at Sonia's on the terrace. It's the Maverick on the go. I remember, I'm telling you, you might never know. Today we are at Sonia's on the terrace. Tomorrow, you don't know. <laughs> Yo, Sonia's on the terrace. Yo, Sonia's on the terrace. Yo, let's say thanks to the Maverick on the go. Now, the results today have really put Group E on its head, you know. Spain are leading on four points, Japan on three, Costa Rica on three, Germany on one point. If Germany and Spain win their matches on Thursday, they will move into the round of 16. Japan will play Spain, Costa Rica will play Germany. If Japan beats Spain, Japan can advance as well. Even if Costa Rica win their match against Germany, Costa Rica could advance alongside Spain if Spain beat um, Japan. Germany can win and go to four points, beat Costa Rica and advance as well if other results go in their favor. So you see all four teams, it is that tantalizing in Group E. Sharona or Shavar, let me get your take on this match here today um, where we saw Morocco beating Belgium 2-0. Two excellent, two brilliant goals by the Moroccans and Hakim Ziyech had an outstanding game and the Chelsea supporters would say, oh, how only if he could play for Chelsea like that on a consistent basis. Most definitely. I mean, credit to, to Morocco. They have did, they did done their job. They were very bright today. But I'm very saddened by the performance from the, the Belgian team. It's the golden-plated um, generation. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because when you're looking to your big names to step up, they were no, non-existent. They were nowhere to be seen, nowhere to be found. And the coach had to put Lukaku um, late in the game, the guy coming from injury, is not sharp, and you have to throw him in the game. But it also led me to, leads me to question, mm -hmm. is Roberto Martinez has done enough, or he cannot do any more yes. with this squad? So I That's guess- That's a great point you've raised, you know, Shabar, because sometimes some coaches can plateau, and it's like they can't take the team any further. You think that could be a factor here? Yeah, I mean, when you look at it, he's been there eight, eight years now. They have played um, Euros together. They have played the last World Cup together. Mm -hmm. And now this World Cup, so that's like maybe a, a 500 to 1,000 games between these players. So maybe he has, he has done what he can do. Yeah, and as uh, Shavar spoke about coach and so on, the German coach and the German team, they're under huge pressure, you know, because they will host the next Euros in 2024 and they would want to do well at this tournament to really set or lay a platform. Um, Sharona, this um, Belgian team, Shavar said he is disappointed. They, they, they flopped at the last World Cup, and so far, after two games, there's nothing, absolutely nothing, to suggest that they will get better here. Definitely. It was a stuttering win mm -hmm. in the first game, and this game, they were disjointed in the front, 
Uh, there was no inspiration in the middle from Kevin De Bruyne. And the team just gave away a little bunny. So I, I don't know. I, I think this is, this is definitely it for them. Yeah, they, they've been so up and down, Eric. Um, the coaching staff and what De Bruyne has said, they're old. Uh, he is pretty much saying the legs can't um, keep up to, to, to the tempo, which is um, there, huh? Yeah, I mean, I would love to, to, to actually um, see in what context he had, he had placed those comments because it's quite surprising and, and a little unprofessional even to hear a player right before a World Cup <laughs> announce that his teammates are a little <laughs> old and, and not that great. So it's a little surprising to hear that, but when you see the performance, it, it almost... By the way, Eric, the, 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 the excerpts of the interview were published by The Athletic, which is a very credible... Um, so right. with, with football information. As I say, but, but you know, in what context was it placed? Because, of course, they are aging. You know, it, is it really something that he expressed that is my concern? But either way, when we watch the, the game, it almost makes sense because that might be the energy that, that he is, as a leader, putting out in the group. And uh, as, as Shafar was saying, it's really Martinez now that, that we start to question because players go on to realise we're not as smooth as where we, we should have been right now. And as a coach, at that point, you have to step up and say, yo, I have to switch up this energy. I have to get this team in a different zone, different mindset. Uh, because right now, they, they look very rusty. And there are other older teams that don't look rusty. Correct. So you have to ask the coach now, what is your role in that? Yeah, Miguel, it's a good thing we don't pick um, teams, look at names on paper and uh, say the result will go X, Y, Z or in whose favour. You've got to go out on the park and execute and play. And what we have seen from Belgium so far hasn't been encouraging at all. Put yourself in the position of the coach now. He's under some serious pressure, huh? Well, when you, when you touch the field, there's no credential ask. So you have to go out there and, and really play. Um, I, I, from, from day one, I've never, I, I, didn't, I didn't believe Belgium would, would have gone through. Um, I believe it would be Croatia and Morocco. Um, based on what I know about Morocco. And I will answer your question. The Morocco team, um, they played with one team in the Arab Cup. Then they played with Jamaica um, with another team um, without any of their um, the players who are in the World Cup now. So something is speaking. I think Belgium is an olden um, generation and the Morocco team is a golden generation for, for Morocco. Um, in terms of the Belgium team, they have not refreshed. They have not refreshed. It's the same player. There's no inspiration at all. Sometimes you wonder what system they're playing. Is it 3 5 2? Is it um, 3 4 3? Um, the players then bumping up in, into each other because you have De Bruyne and Hazard, they play so close together. Um, in 3 4 3, when you play the system, each player individual, in front, they have to have um, very in, good individual skills. Hazard, you know, he's not playing for, for, for Real Madrid. He has passed his days. Um, De Bruyne is. Um, has taken the role of more a passer. So, you know, it, it is a very disjointed team and, and um, you have Toby at the back. He played in, in the league in Qatar very, before. Very slow player, not a high quality that you want to play with a back three. So there are a lot of questions that the coach needs to needs to ask. Is it, um, am I playing De Bruyne in the, in the right position? Am I playing the right system for, for these two players to get the best out of them? Uh, have I picked the, the right team for, for, for the World Cup? So he would be answering a lot of questions. What I know, though, he has one more game and that he has to inspire the team. Yes, they do have some, some quality and Hazard, maybe he can do something or one of the Hazard, they can, three of them can come together and do something. Um, but... You know, he has to um, inspire them. He has to, you know, I, I, I don't know what he said to them, but he has to inspire them because it's more mental. If Ke Kevin Bur De Bruyne can come out and make such a statement, he's really talking to the coach. He's not talking to the world. He's really speaking to the coach. And maybe he has confidence in the coach. So um, the dressing room is very, very difficult for the coach right now. Yeah, so uh, Morocco, we have to give them some credit here, Miguel, because they have done the opposite. They have, they have gelled, they have chemistry. Ziyech and a couple other players who fell out with the former coach, they're back in the fold and leading uh, by example and by experience. Um, he had an absolutely outstanding game today, didn't he? The game speed, the, the game speed, the switching plays, the 1v1 on the sides, players running into the half space, they were doing a lot of things, a lot of um, uh, attacking principles that we wanted to see. You look at Arawat, uh, uh, sorry, Ara, Ara, uh, Amarat, the midfielder, he was like, uh, I don't know if I can use this word on TV, let, let me not use it, but he was like, um, <laughs> a, you know, he was like a Casemiro, he was... You know, he was so pessimistic, you know, in a positive way that, you know, he, he thinks his player is going to lose the ball. 
and he's always there. You know, he's smelling, he's vigilant. You know, and they play very exciting football. And um, you know, I, they're not my dark horse team, but I, I'm I'm seeing them coming out. I don't want to talk too early, but I see them coming out of this zone because I want the world to see um, African team that is tactically astute, um, that is playing very quick, that is very disciplined. And um, it's good for this um, part of the world. It's good for this part of the world. So yes, I am excited for the next game with them. You're spot on there, Miguel, about being tactically astute because um, what has plagued a number of the African teams at previous World Cup campaigns, they get to, say, the quarterfinal round and people say they look naive, they look uh, out of sorts, um, tactically naive and technically naive as well as if they don't have a plan, they don't know what to do. But it's a total opposite with this Moroccan team. We're going to go to a break and when we come back, we'll open up the phone lines and uh, take your calls, take your assessment of what you have seen so far. The number 876 733 2461, and uh, that goes up to six. And we look at the other game which was contested on the day Croatia up against Canada. Final whistle brought to you by Digicel, Grace, Pepsi, and Burger King. This food's got the taste that moves you. Yard and abroad, it moves you. Grace Foods, the taste that moves you. Feel all the vibes and the time when they be a Grace Foods from the end. Yeah, the taste that moves you. From the spices, move you. Everybody shout out Grace. When the food speaks to us, the vibes we love. Yeah. The taste that moves you. Grace bringing the food you love. Grace has a taste that everyone loves. That's why when we move, we move with Grace. Let's talk volume. TVJ reaches more than a million people over the age of 10 during the course of a day. TV talks to your audience. Hello? Let's talk TV. Call the TVJ sales department at 876-926-1100 or visit televisionjamaica.com. Let's talk volume. Smile Jamaica reaches over 400,000 people at the lowest cost per thousand. TV talks to your audience. Hello. Let's talk TV. Call the TVJ sales department at 876-926-1100 or visit televisionjamaica.com. <laughs> the season of giving. Enjoy enough pickings this Christmas with a chance to pick and win your share of over 16 million in cash and prizes. Plus, get 25% off a 7 or 28 day Prime Brought a Bundle in the My Digicel app today. Enter to pick and win with Digicel this Christmas. Final Whistle brought to you by Digicel, Grace, Pepsi and Burger King. Welcome back to Final Whistle. We are going to the phone lines now. We have Donovan from Montego Bay joining us. Uh, Donovan, good afternoon and welcome to Final Whistle. Hi, good afternoon. How are you doing? I'm doing quite well. What about you? Uh, not too bad, not too bad. How is the World Cup going for you so far? Uh, started off hot. Um, I'm an English fan. So, you know, my first game was somewhat exceptional. Very tepid the next game. But, I mean, we're looking all right. Yes. Um, what are you expecting from England? You're on a World Cup drought, not since 1966. You haven't gotten the title, but um, you got to um, Euro final and um, got to the semis at the last World Cup. So that's something for Gareth Southgate to build on, um, isn't it? Well, as you rightfully said, we're on the up. Um, I do believe it's coming home. Um, we do have work to do. I'm not naive. It will be difficult, but with the squad that we have, I mean, Southgate just needs to get the tactics right. Once he does that, I have no problems or no concerns about us taking it home. Yeah, in terms of the tactics, what would you do if you were him? Because people like Grealish and so on um, haven't gotten a really extended run as yet. But he has confidence in certain players like Saka and so on. We know they are going to start. Uh, Bellingham, for example, uh, right. and so on. Mm -hmm. Well, definitely looking for Foden to start the next game, play the full 90. Um, Harry Kane, to be honest, he's our captain. He's our priceless gem, but he is looking a bit leggy. I'd probably think about giving him a rest. I mean, makes no sense carrying alternate forwards and not giving him a chance. Um, I'm looking at Rashford to get a look in as well. We'd love to see Bellingham playing a bit more attacking, 
Yeah. You know, maybe bring in someone like a Jordan Henderson. I'm not sure where Calvin Phillips is in terms of his fitness. fitness. So I'd probably bring in Henderson to play beside Rice and play Bellingham more forward. Um, like I said, Saka, um, Foden, and maybe look at Rashford playing through the middle. That should be work. Um, that should be fine for us. Yeah, great assessment there. Like your assessment, and if you push Bellingham forward and you bring in a Jordan yeah. Henderson. He could then play alongside a Declan Rice as the holding uh, midfielders, I would want to probably think. Um, good Definitely. assessment there, Donovan. Thank you so much. All right, you're welcome. All right, that's when I like how fans follow their teams, you know, Andrew, and um, they're very involved. And I was just about to say, I didn't hear him call um, for the name, but he yes. called it at the very end because I really am looking forward to seeing Foden get an extended run. Before we talk more about England, there's another game we need to talk about today, you know. Croatia beat Canada 4-1. Canada scored a goal after 56 seconds, the fastest goal at this World Cup tournament so far. And after that, they, it, there was a mighty long stretch. They didn't have another shot on goal. But after Canada scored the first goal, that goal, the first World Cup goal, by the way, coming back on the big stage after 36 years, they somewhat went into a shell. I don't know what happened to the game plan, uh, Miguel. They looked a little uncertain as to what, what are we supposed to do from this point? Are we uh, supposed to lock shop? Um, it, it, it went to pieces. And then um, Croatia, give them credit. You can't see the goal after 56 seconds, Miguel. All their experience, I thought, came to the fore. And in this scenario, what you need, you need leaders out on the park. People like Pericic and Modric, they took on the mantle and they led. And their experience came through. They won it 4-1, Miguel. Yeah, definitely, leadership is very, very important. But I think what the what the what Croatian did was they the, the game became open, and once you you open the game against quality the players, it's going to be um, devastating for you. I believe Croatia have still two of the best midfielders in the world, which um, uh, what's the name um, Kovacic and and Dan Madrid, two of the best midfielder for me in the world. And this is where they won the midfield, uh, won, won, won the game inside of the midfield. They, they play with a high tempo, with great rhythm. Um, you had them changing the ball very quickly. Again, if you look at the second, the sec I think the second goal, you know, um, a very good part with the goalkeeper, went back to the goalkeeper, just to stretch the Canadian team, then made a long, long, long pass, win the ball, win the second ball, play to the sides, 1v1, then switch the ball into the half space. Goal Croatia. So they were switching the ball a lot. Um, the, 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 the Canadian team, they were more um, thinking about how they could score uh, at the next goal rather than, you know, you know, coming back and being compact like oh, they, 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 they did in the first game. But credit to the Croatia. They're, they're a fantastic team for me. You know, I love I love how they play football. And this is football, you know, very fast, fast pace breaking the lines, you know, going through the wide areas, you know, very variation in terms of attack, and they did that. So the Canadians, I think they're a good team, but, you know, they were in a great era, you know, in terms of what to do, and, you know, football is not playing in a great, great era. They're going to lose, and they lost to a very good Croatian team. Yeah, and the Croats are one of the older teams, you know, and that's why we have to be a little cautious, Andrew, in terms of how we talk about some teams which are old, because some are old and look very, very good, like the Croats, Liam, didn't they? Because the way Canada, Liam, um, played against Belgium for the first 30-35 minutes. They ran Belgium into the ground and the expectations, I would want to think, were very, very high as a result of that coming into the, today's game. But they got a rude awakening, um, Liam. No, yeah, and I think it's kind of your know, similar story against Belgium, you know. Looking at the stats, they had more, more of the possession. So in the final third, they were just lacking, you know. They, they had the ball, but they just, you know, weren't creating the chances. When they did create the chances, weren't finishing the chances. So this kind of team has a lot of potential, I think, and you know, a lot to look forward to for 2026 when they, you know, post the World Cup. Also defensively, you know, made another mistake. So yeah, you know, there, where it comes in experience and this team is a new, uh, you know, pretty new team, the you know, first World Cup in a while. So a lot of potential, but they're gonna feel hard done by going out so early. But a lot to, you know, look forward to. Um, as as for Croatia, you know, they were they were fantastic. You know, 13 shots, 10 on target. Kramaric was lethal today. Um, and they just did everything Canada did not, did not do, you know, defensively and attacking-wise. Andrew, Miguel spoke about the Canadians opening up the game and trying to get that second goal. But in doing so, did they become a little tactically naive in certain segments of the game, you think? Yes, I, I think so. I, I think that, you know, once you got that early goal, you had to consolidate. Um, you can't be going all out and throwing yourself and throwing caution to the win. 
And I think that allowed the Croatians with their patience and their experience to get back into the game because they are very methodical. They just do the same things over and over and keep doing it until a war of attrition takes place and they break you down. And that's exactly what they did. And I think the Canadians got themselves exposed and when they were exposed, they were punished by an experienced team. And you have to give Croatia credit. Though these players are older, they are also wiser and are using the ball a lot better than, say, a Belgian team. They are not having the type of movement that Croatia has. So, uh, you know, you have to give credit. Um, the players play well. And Modric is a leader. You see him out there leading the Brilliant. troops, rallying them on, getting them to move the ball about. And, you know, they look like a synchronized team. And, you know, they're, they're a team that we have to watch out for in um, the knockout phase. Quite so. They have um, quite a bit of pedigree. Um, Shavar, uh, the Canadians, the longer the game went on, they, they, they went to pieces fast and furious. Yeah. Uh, um, well, they have nothing to, be, um, to feel bad about because, as Liam said, they're a young team. I'm, I'm thinking that they're looking forward to prepare for 2026. They just have to have a couple of replacements in terms of their captain, Atiba Hutchinson, and a couple of other defenders. But after the first goal, the naivety sets in and uh, they're all over the place. They should have come behind the ball, did like they did in the first game. And also, they ran a lot in the first game, so maybe that... Took a took toll a on the legs. Definitely. Think. I think so, especially on their captain. Maybe the, the coach should have looked at him 30 minutes in and, and took him out because he's older and the pace got a hold of him. Yes, because they really went hell for leather against Belgium, you know, for the first 30, 35 minutes, Sharona. And uh, optimism um, was very high when they got that uh, goal after 56 seconds today. But after that, it was a totally different story. Yes, because they could have, you know, sit, sat back a bit. Um, and as Coach Price said, consolidate. So go into the half leading. You know, win the, win the half and then let's see what we can do in the second half. Conserve because, as we rightfully said, they ran a whole lot. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's your first game. You haven't been to the World Cup for a while. You're seeking that first goal. And, I mean, I'm really proud of um, Davies. Uh, very, very uh, good goal. Yeah, my, he's and an outstanding player. Young outstanding, player. Mm -hmm. outstanding young player and to look forward to. Uh, but I just think Croatia was saying, you know, this we have been here before you know they've scored on us early before and which will just soak up the pressure we'll wait on our turn and they they pranced you know they just pounced upon them mm -hmm. um in even in the in evening extra time so they were not letting up at all yeah uh, eric sharona spoke about the need for the canadians to have been a little more conservative i'm just wondering how much more they could have been because when you look at how perisic uh was opening up there opening them up on his flank and um in other areas of the park uh, they were really dissecting the canadians um what do you do in such a scenario um i mean things become easier when you make the spaces smaller uh -huh. in, in the danger areas in your defensive third um and maybe things would have been a little easier, but it, it, it's what you point out, and even Miguel was pointing it out. Modric and Kovacic uh, were playing a great game. I think Kovacic with his, his driving runs at an extra level to break the lines. Um, we see Kramaric, who had something to make up from last game, where he did not have a good game, got a lot of criticism, and very composed finishing today with two goals. And then, as you mentioned, Perisic, at workhorse, you know, and that's his game, vintage Perisic we saw today, and, and collect two assists on top of it. So. It becomes difficult for a team like Canada to stop a team like Croatia once they start going. And um, there are probably different tactical decisions that would have made it easier to stop them. But if they really could have stopped them if they're going, it becomes difficult against a quality team like Croatia. Yeah, and by the way, Alfonso Davies' goal for Canada came after 68 seconds, the fastest goal so far at this World Cup. We've got uh, Ted from St. Catherine now on the lines. Ted, good afternoon and welcome to Final Whistle. Good afternoon, sir. Even to you all, sir. Yes, man. Welcome. Go ahead. We're hearing you loud and clear. Yes, it's the same thing that called about Argentina the other day. Since Argentina would win, win, win their match very easy. Oh. Against Mexico. It's a surprise. How are you, sir? <laughs> 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 yes, sir. This is, um, the gentleman called about England. England is not going nowhere in the World Cup. That's what I know. Oh, really? Nowhere. Nowhere in is going. Oh, and not even out of the group stage, they're not uh, going to yeah, go, Ted? And the CONCACAF team, them, all of them in a trouble. All of them. <laughs> all of them in a trouble. Uh, all Rica, the CONCACAF teams are in trouble. <laughs> Costa Rica against Germany. Like I know, no, no. I don't see them as 
That, that, one striker as a second German defense. That, that's crazy. That's not a good prediction you're making here, no, you know, Ted, because <laughs> CONCACAF will host the World Cup in 2026, and Mexico, Japan Canada, and the United States. No, sir. Japan cannot manage being the type of um, passing ball. Japan uh -huh. never managed that routine. Okay. So, and and this, they give Germany a lifeline. Right. Giving Germany a lifeline is a very dangerous, it's dangerous to the world tournament now, because <laughs> Germany can't do it, you know, they're dead. You can't get him at that lifeline. Then let them come back and go all the way after them play. So, so you, think, you think Costa Rica is in some trouble against Germany on Thursday? Costa Rica has no chance, sir. No chance. Just like Mexico has no chance against Argentina. Costa Rica has no chance against Germany, sir. <laughs> all right, and dude. As I said, um, Japan can't manage to be in Japan's ball pass. Mm -hmm. That's like an expose of our, our, our C1B. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, Ted. Thank you so much for calling. Yes, sir. We have another break coming up, but um, I said earlier that um, it's important or imperative that the Germans do well. They will host the next Euro in 2024. It's critically important the CONCACAF teams do well, put on a good show here, regardless of how far they reach. Because, as I said just now, Canada, the United States and Mexico will host the World Cup in 2026. They are already in there as the host nation. Three and a half other places are up for grabs. And we were here saying if, if three and a half other places are up for grabs and these three are in, and the reggae boys, uh, Jamaica can qualify for the World Cup. Earlier um, last week, we celebrated the 25th anniversary of the 98 historic campaign. It may be another long drought, but if they can't get in this, then what else? We take a break and we come back and tell you some much more. Final Whistle brought to you by Digicel, Grace, Pepsi, and Burger King. <laughs> because it's the season of giving, enjoy enough pickings this Christmas with a chance to pick and win your share of over 16 million in cash and prizes. Plus, get 25% off a 7 or 28 day Prime Brother bundle in the My Digicel app today. Enter to pick and win with Digicel this Christmas. Cool. We just get what? Are you more hungry, man? We are the king of this. Like how we are the king of burgers. You see when Burger King goes so boom and they make the beef patty well seasoned up and put it on the open flame, then they go so juicy pickles, tomatoes, freshly cut onions, crispy lettuce, classic. Every other burger still stuck at square one. Beam! Three juicy waffles right on time. Taste rules your way at Burger King. The best tasting burgers under the sun. Let's talk viewership. TVJ has an overall 78% share of free-to-air TV viewership island-wide and the largest audiences of any station every day. TV talks to your audience. Hello? Let's talk TV. Call the TVJ sales department at 876-926-1100 or visit televisionjamaica.com. Grace Foods got the taste that moves you. Yard and abroad, it moves you. Grace Foods, the taste that moves you. Fuel the vibes and the time when they be a Grace Foods from the end. Yeah, the taste that moves you. From the spices, move you. Everybody shout out Grace. Grace Foods meet the guns. Put the vibes that is for love. Yeah. The taste that moves you. Grace bring in the food you love. Grace has the taste that everyone loves. That's why when we move, we move with Grace. Final Whistle brought to you by Digicel, Grace, Pepsi, and Burger King. Welcome back to Final Whistle. We have just a few more minutes to work with, and we're going to look at the games coming up tomorrow. The first one on the day in Group G, Cameroon up against Serbia. And in that group, it's Group G. Brazil are leading on three points. Switzerland have three. Cameroon and Serbia are without a point. Quickly, Andrew, Cameroon up against Serbia at 5 o'clock in the morning. I am hoping that a bruised Serbia will feel the wrath of the African Kings Cameroon. And at 11 o'clock is the other game. I'm skipping to 11 o'clock. The other game in Group G, Brazil against Switzerland. Miguel, Neymar and Danilo still out. But um, with the coach taking, what, 9-10 forwards, he still has enough attacking ammunition, <laughs> I would want to think, for this contest. Yes, definitely. I was speaking to the analyst um, from for Switzerland, um, Kevin Elms, and I said to him, what do you think about the game? He said, hey, this one is a big one. I said, yes. Um, Rafina is coming for Rodriguez. 
So I'm expecting um, Brazil to win. It's not going to be an easy game. They're going to try and 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 and, and uh, make you know create a block. You know, in the European team, especially like a Switzerland. But I think Brazil, especially how they play the second half, they will do um, still do well against uh, Switzerland. Yeah, Group H, uh, the other game at 8 o'clock, South Korea up against uh, Ghana. In fact, that's the first game in Group H on the day. Liam, this group has uh, Portugal leading with three points, South Korea on a point, Uruguay one point, Ghana without a point. This South Korea-Ghana clash, Liam. Oh, yeah. Um, before I start, very quickly, I just wanted to say again, watch out for Jonathan Astoria for Canada. Um, I think he brings creativity to the team and that he should have started... Um, both games, and he would have brought creativity, creativity they needed. Sorry, I just had to get that off my chest. Um, but no, <laughs> South Korea, Ghana, um, both teams, dark horse teams that are looking to you know come out of the group. I think the difference between the two is South Korea, a very disciplined side. Ghana, not so much. So I think South Korea may have the edge, but I know I'm probably looking for a draw here. The second game in Group H at 2 o'clock, Portugal against the Uruguay. Eric, Portugal, as I said, leading. Uruguay lying third on a point at the moment. So the Portuguese, I'm quite sure, will be looking to make it two from two here. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I, I hope for Portugal to see Leao in the starting lineup. I think he's a player who can really break down a, a defence line in a 1v1. And I think they would do well bringing Carvalho in from the start. Really, a defensive mid can kind of control that game a little better there. And uh, I think if Portugal kind of get those tweaks a little better, they should be able to get the better of Uruguay, who I think still looked a little um, uninspired in that first game. Yeah, um, Cavani came on for Uruguay in the first game, Sharuna. Looked lively. They started to pull the strings and looked um, with a more, played with a little more urgency. Cristiano Ronaldo, the spotlight is still on him. What are you expecting from this clash? Well, I'm expecting that Uruguay understands the assignment that they cannot come with that lackluster behavior and wait until the end of the game to start playing. Um, so I'm hoping that we'll see a tight competition, but I'll definitely give Portugal the edge if we're looking at the last performance. Alrighty, so another four interesting games to look forward to come tomorrow. This is where we put the lid on the final whistle for today. We invite you to come back with us tomorrow because what we have seen so far, you know, there's all the indications that we'll see some more surprises, some more upsets, some more brilliant goals from the top, top draw. And we look forward to that for the remainder of this World Cup. Come back with us tomorrow on behalf of the entire team. I'm Spencer St. Pleasant Viewing. Christmas with a chance to pick and win your share of over 16 million in cash and prizes. Plus, get 25% off a 7 or 28 day Prime Brother bundle in the My Digicel app today. Enter to pick and win with Digicel this Christmas. Final Whistle is brought to you by... Get 25% off a 7 or 28 day Prime Brother bundle in the My Digicel app today. Enter to pick and win with